Actually, this is going to be the last uh, webinar of the series before the summer. And um, hopefully you can see my screen. Thank you very much for attending. Or uh, let's just uh, jump into your presentation and just give me, tell me pass or whatever so I, I can move from a slide to a slide. Would you mind to introduce yourself and, and jump into the yes. presentation when you want? That's fine. Hello everyone, my name is Jöran Henriks and I work in a healthcare system in Sweden named Region Jönköping County and we serve about 360,000 people and have three hospitals and about 40 care centers and 25 dental care practices. And during the last 30 years I have been working as she chief executive of learning and innovation in this system and uh, one of my uh, most positive parts of my work is to join all the improvement efforts that our system have done during the years and uh, I'm so convinced that uh, how you imagine things also opens up the opportunities to make positive changes. So uh, I would like to share with you some thoughts based on our experience of how to improve care and the challenges we have to distribute good care for tomorrow. And therefore I have named it Together Creating Tomorrow Today. Our success in our healthcare system, we measure in how lives and health are for our citizens and inhabitants. And our mission is best possible life in our region. And the value we are working with is about how we develop the service for the patients. Now, I am aware of that the way we produce things are so different uh, over different centuries and decades. So for 400 years ago, it was a farming quality we were trying to achieve. But for tomorrow's care, it's much more about social psychology issues and mental health issues and relationships that will define how we should uh, distribute and uh, collaborate, uh, co-work with our citizens. Next page. So therefore, I hope I can give you a perspective of our business strategy. And if you Google on this um, uh, web address, you can find some background to what we call quality as business strategy. And I hope I can challenge you with ideas about what can quality as digital business strategy be in the future. Next page. Now, there are always a, a hard and a soft side of care. And if you don't mind, I share with you some poetry that I think very well capture what we need to have in mind from a soft perspective. This is a poem from David White, a Canadian living in America. Sometimes if you move carefully through the forest, breathing like the ones in the old stories, who could cross a shimmering bed of dry leaves without the sound? You come to a place whose only task is to trouble you with tiny but frightening requests. Conceived out of nowhere, but in, the play, in this place beginning to lead everywhere. Requests to stop what you are doing right now and to stop what you are becoming while you do it. Questions that can make or unmake a life questions that have patiently waited for you. When you work with learning and innovation, I think 
this end of the poem is so important to phrase the questions that are waiting for us. Next page. The old ones was what might we learn from those who regard never ending improvement as an enterprise wide effort to the new question. How might we improve the value of the contribution that healthcare service makes to better health? How might we improve the value of the contribution that healthcare service makes to better health? Next page. Therefore, since the late 90s in the region Jönköping, we have we have been so convinced that radical customization is the way we approach all our problems. And therefore we always ask what is best for the citizen named Esther? How can we in our daily work take responsibility for the steps we are working in, give feedback to the step before and facilitate the step after. And always emphasize that we are in it together, together with the citizens, together with the other professionals. Next page. This is actually our business tragedy. We believe that we need to be very transparent with the purpose of the work the mission, the vision, and the beliefs. We have to have a map of processes that everybody shares, so we read the system from the same map and not having different maps in different departments or hospitals. We do our follow-up in a balanced scorecard where we always have indicators that describes how the customer's perspective looks like, how the operations perspective looks like, how the employee's perspective looks like, and how the business perspective looks like. We try to develop our system for obtaining information, our data warehouse, and how that can feed us with different kind of information all the time. How well number one, two and three works defines our strategic objectives, our improvement efforts and our resources for change and the language to do all the changes are based on the Deming quality wheel and how we can always be systematic in plan, do, study, act. Next. 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 I'm, I'm trying. I don't know. Trying, why. trying, trying. <laughs> Here okay. we go. Now, as I said, we move to from sick care, taking care of sick people and diseases, and, and caring to the question, how can we help people to develop their own health? And health for us is to be happy with one's life tasks. That's a German philosopher that said that health is to be happy with your own life tasks. Next. With this said, we are so challenged with the technology change, technology change, both the, all the IT development, but also the knowledge development that are now in front of our eyes, in our hands. But at the same time, the social change, the organizational change are so slow. And what kind of management and what kind of processes can we develop that helps us to minimize the gaps between these two curves? Next page. And with this health definition, we also need to move as a system away from it's about me 
and my ego and what I like to do and the curative work to a preventive approach, to a prediction approach where it's about the ecosystem and how we together can produce products that are helping people to stay healthy. Next page. Therefore, the key is to develop the answers on the questions digital in the first place and we meet when we need. And literally, we are close to the situation that the care meeting are in the pants pockets. The people have it in their cell phones. Next page. Therefore, we need to help our employees to imagine, integrate what we, I now talk about into the daily processes and work with their work and innovate their work processes. And this can be done if their work still have compassion for the people they try to support. They understand the modern co-design uh, methods and they co-produce the service with the people. So it's all about the people. Next page. To make this happen, we believe that we need to rekindle the spirit of kindness. And the very act of kindness is about showing sympathy with the, within the actions that assist people. And here you see as the second picture, Christian uh, climbing on, on a hill outside Jönköping. Three years after he has been a self-dialyzed patient and Britt Marie, uh, far right in the bottom of this picture, helped Christian to do his own dialysis. Based on that experience, we developed departments where people do their own dialysis from A to Z and without any nursing or doctor's assist, they take care of the host process themselves. Next page. We thought that that was a transformation of care, the self-dialysis, but these are pictures from another hospital in Europe, I think it is from uh, Germany or maybe ne the Netherlands that are now talked about a lot because it is a child department and the ch children were very afraid the night before they should go to the operation room and couldn't sleep and when they woke up in the morning they were very exhausted. So the department bought these electric cars and had the children to drive to the operation room and suddenly the anxiety left the uh, service and you got the children as co-producers to the service they should get. And you can read more about this in the book Intelligent Kindness. Next page. So it's time, I think, to think in completely new service processes. Next page. There are three innovation areas that we look into now. How to develop the health and have that as a strategy. How can we integrate the care in the whole care value process, but also make it very proximity close to the patient, inside the local communities? And how can we improve our work with co-design and co-production? Next page. We need these three areas because we believe that healthcare tomorrow will be delivered in new architectural designs that fit the nature of what, where we are trying to go. We talk about value change, chain, 
standardized sequently processes to meet the commonly occur, uh, occurring need. That's more like a, a come in industry, value shops, customized response to particularly need and people are taken care of in a wholeness. They come to a place and everything gets fixed. And the third approach is the network in the community where you get your support both from peers, other neighbors, and of course professional knowledge within that network. Next page. So value chain is about link processes that provide reliable solution to standard problems where we need algorithmic management. Value shop is cost customized solutions to unique problems, fewer of unknown origins. And value network, it's facilitating relationships between people with problems and solutions coming from diverse resources. Next page. We are now approaching this by the development of the technology. We try to standardize our patient records in a way with quality methods so we can have feedback from our work through our patient records in the daily work and become much more predictive in our management and understand when we are doing the right thing in the moment we are doing it. The precision medicine gives us completely new ways of, for example, this picture comes from cancer care and we can individualize the medicine in completely new ways. Cost of artificial intelligence, fantastic chemical development of different medicine. And we will customize the solution much more. And we will have home monitoring. Here is an oximeter that measure the, the oxygen in the blood. And we can very soon have a situation where people stay home, get support from their own network and are monitored and the measures are sent to the hospital and people can stay safe until they are, it's needed for them to come to a, a hospital or a care center. Next page. Here you see the, the theory from what I now describe as the three options, shop, chain, and network, and next page, next page. And th this is just the th theory platform, and you see the, the um, uh, article you can read uh, that is named Rethinking Value Creation in Learning Healthcare Systems. Next page. All this takes new leadership, I think we need a leadership that always can define the shared purpose. Develop a feeling of belonging to a team, a group, a process, because I think that's needed to be a part of a transformation and contribute to that. Our world of AI and machine learning gives us completely new ways to predict and work with prevention. We need to standardize our work in structures, but also develop agency and energy platforms. The leadership needs to embrace contradiction and tensions and dilemmas. We have to unleash learning and make everybody involved and make people closer to the last known knowledge. So everybody has to work in a learning organization. And we have to find the methods 
to go from small tests and small scale changes to large scale frameworks. And you can read more about that in the, uh, on the link that I have put under this picture. Next page. So my question is, how might we improve the value of the contribution that healthcare service makes to better health? I think it's time to leave the healthcare that is defined by the houses. Now the care needs to be defined by how the processes for the patients and citizens look like. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Goran. Um, I have a, a number of questions that are uh, that they are ready. Uh, of course, anybody uh, can also incorporate their questions anytime. You can do so by mousing down uh, over the bottom part of the page and, and you can incorporate them in questions and answers. I will read them to you, Goran. Uh, first one is, is from Carlos. Um, he says that uh, you talk about uh, quality and mention them. In, do you deal with value-based healthcare? Is this your goal? Mm, the, the concept value-based healthcare is kind of stolen by Michael Porter. But, and we do not believe that um, uh, his theory is completely right in every moment. We think that um, uh, it doesn't develop equal care for the whole population. And therefore, there is uh, other dimensions that you have to have into healthcare systems than just market solutions. But in the meaning that having the value of the care processes from the patient point of view, yes, then we talk about value-based care process, uh, value-based care. Okay, uh, from what I understand, that's what uh, Porter uh, states for in terms of value. That is the is the patient that who has to define value, not the organization. Anyway, Absolutely. second question. Uh, yeah, second question from from Carlos is to show sympathy means that before we start with uh, with empathy, don't we? Yes. Uh, do you agree with this sentence? Yes. From Carlos? Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. I want to come back to this slide, which is basically the reason why I uh, uh, I wanted to invite you. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Um, I would like to come back to this slide, uh, Goran. Yes. Um, could you could you give us a kind of more in, insight about the seven steps? Uh, of course, we can all read in the screen. Okay, but can you give us? Um, why perhaps in this order, uh, one, one critical thought that is not um, uh, clear by reading and watching the, the picture uh, in each of these seven steps? No, well, let me first say that this is seven rules and not seven steps. Sorry, sorry, my mistake, my mistake, uh, seven, seven rules. So okay. they are independent in okay. some ways. My mistake, my mistake, that's a good point. And my experience is that healthcare gets more and more complex. And this is uh, my experience after 35 years in health and care, that the complexity needs to be dealed with, dealt with by the management and leaders. But it's quite often so simple solutions that just create another <laughs> problem. But if you try to practice my suggestion and Helen Bevan's suggestion of these seven rules, you can minimize the tension around the complexity. You have to be clear with the purpose and everybody in the group needs to have a pur the purpose in front of the eyes. The purpose of the healthcare system is saving lives 
and produce health for the citizens. The second about belonging is that sometimes we have too much of top down and too much of uh, centralization that people lose their contact with ownership of the uh, workplace and the processes. Therefore, we have to think around belonging. And Goran, if I may, uh, to make it even more insightful, can you, uh, for example, put an example on how to get that? Yeah. I mean, say, say that we all agree that these are good rules, but now the follow up question will be okay, so how do I get uh, this if implemented? You, yeah. So if you, if you read on this blog, you will see both cases and, ex and um, exercises how you should achieve it. Okay, but um, since we are in this talk, uh, yeah, yeah, can you yeah, go yeah. As, as you work through the seven rules, for example, for this number two, can you say, okay, what, what could be an example where you increase belonging? Uh, what can you do to, incre to, to increase belonging? Uh, an example, just to it, clarify. Exactly. So I think it's that it starts with our shared purpose. You have to own the purpose of why you are here. When you right. do that, you need to develop meeting places where people are invited to share the strategic challenges that your process or your working place are in and not be stolen or taken away from the strategic issues. If you are involved in the strategic problems, you also feel more responsible to support how to find good solutions. And if you have that approach, you also develop a belonging and ownership to the work where you, you should do or you should try to. Right. I, I still would like to dig down a little bit more. So how do you do that? It's just a question. You, you talk about meeting places. Is that, is just that a question of, of organizing meetings with an agenda? Uh, how, how do you increase that? What, what is the flavor? <laughs> Well, apart from the common stuff that everybody does, which is no, meetings but, and blah blah. Yeah, but I think if, when you, if you should improve the democracy in a working place, everybody needs to have the same value. You you can't have a quick no all the time. You have to have a openness for different ideas. You have to think positive uh, about everybody's possibility to contribute to the purpose and you design a meeting place differently if you share my values that I now talk about or if you think that you are the one who have the solutions. Right, but what about an organization that doesn't have that and wants to have it? What would you suggest to them? If the organization do not have that kind of approach, then you need to uh, develop, for example, team concepts and talk about how can we as a team develop our care. Let me take a, an example from your world. Uh, but this, uh, I, I, you, you know this better than me, but the secret of the game of Barcelona when they were so successful and now the secret of Manchester City when they play football is that the playing idea, the rules of how to act as a player are shared of everyone and the closeness between the different players are so uh, well designed that the mistakes are reduced. And that is a perfect metaphor to how you develop teams at the working place. If they are too far away from each other, if they don't play with the same playbook, it doesn't work. Right. Let, let's move to number three then, predict and prevent. 
So How, yeah, in healthcare, ahead. we quite often work with things when they have happened. And we deal with the problem when it exists. But with quality registers, with well-structured patient records, we can extract data that help us to find what people need our knowledge earlier in the process. Let me give you a very concrete example. In the COVID care in my system, we found that there were too many patients that came to the hospital and had to go directly into the intensive care unit. We found that they had special uh, uh, bodies, so they had uh, maybe too high cholesterol, they had a sugar level that was uh, dangerous, and, and uh, they were quite big. And the, the age was over 75, and the, more men than women. Okay. Now, then we knew the kind of panorama that they, all these patients shared that came to the acute emergency room and directly had to go to the intensive care. If we could find those people when they got measured positive to COVID and give them home monitoring, so they came earlier to the hospital, they got this uh, speed oxygen support with a high pressure, so their lungs didn't collapse, so they didn't have to go to the intensive care unit. They could go home after maybe five to seven days instead of staying three weeks or four weeks and uh, with a bad, uh, uh, with a big risk to die. What we did was to buy in hundreds of oxygen meters and give out to our primary care, recognized all people that had these kind of problems that I described when they got measured as positive of COVID, told the doctors, look after these patients so they come early enough to the care center to the hospital and we don't have to give them intensive care. Here we prevented a, a worse clinical situation by predicting the groups of patients that were in bigger risk of getting severe COVID. That is predict and prevent. Right. What about uh agency power. <laughs> uh, I didn't I didn't know that concept before. What what does it what does it mean? Well agency comes from uh, uh, if you create um, uh, movements like Greta Thunberg, you know the, this young yes. woman that uh, creates environment uh, <laughs> uh, uh, movements all over the world. She is not working with any structure. She is working with agency power. She finds people's inner motivation to things and convince them that it's their energy that is needed to change the world to become more green. That is agency power. Now the other power is structure power. That is when we have care programs or guidelines and we demand how people should act in the process. And our theory is that we need both. But we cannot have only one of the things because then we lose efficiency in the daily work. We need both. Okay, understand. Um... 
So how so how public uh, a public uh, administration that is so risk averse almost by almost by definition it shouldn't be that way but most of them are they are big and and you have civil servants and that then become managers and they have been grown in that culture how can they embrace contradiction and tensions <laughs> I think. Uh... Uh, uh, polarities is life and I think uh, the better you can stand polarities and the tensions that those polarities uh, creates the healthier you are that there is no black and white there is always something in between and the example of our public system that are risk averse, I think uh, we have to reduce what we call safety one thinking, that we go after things when they have happened and uh, we uh, blame people because they have caused errors and instead help people to uh, reduce the chances by understanding why it works so well, even though uh, we are not always doing the right thing. And my example here is a, is the, is, is metaphor for contradictions. You have to help people to read why it works much more and we also have a system that hunts people that cause harm but but the good and strong leadership can explain this contradiction and help people in that and is is for example is your region doing that yes we how are studying how, why how, how did you do how do you guys do that how we are studying we have we are studying why it works so well so often without our understanding why it goes yeah, but so well. How, I mean, can you give us some examples to uh, to clarify that, that? How can you think of a, one example where your region embraced a contradiction or a tension and did it well? Uh, who was well, involved and what happened or what was the solution? Uh, for example, in the, uh, in the child department, we have. Uh, done this work, so we have um, uh, asked them to map their um, process around um, two early uh, born children and within each step of the work process around th that group of uh, patients, we have um, uh, done risk assessments of things that can happen and by valuing the different risks they have also learned how well it works without them understanding the big risk. So we have done exercises like um, simulations where we have measured the risk, but also talked about how well it works, even though we don't understand the risk. And then you get the very productive dialogue about how important it is about this closeness I talked about, about the relationship, how you feed back to each other, uh, what you have done, how you communicate, not only measures, but also your processes and all that um, emphasize the safety to approach to make it good without or not hunting down the, all the harms or risks, uh, bad things that can happen. Okay. Um, well, about the, the next one, I think that is very, very straightforward, very hard to deny uh, on the, the statement there. I'm more interested, perhaps, on on the last one, on on the 
small scale changes on a large scale framework. When you so let's, let's go with the semantics. Framework for you means uh, if you remember the PowerPoint I had that showed the um, quality as business strategy, where I right. talked about the different steps. That's the large scale framework. That's a large scale framework. Okay. And when you change in your on your map, it should be tested in small steps before you implement it. Quite often in our uh, top down organizations, we change without first made some tests if it really works or not. Okay. Uh, what other frameworks can you think about, about apart from um, quality as a, as a business, business strategy? strategy? Uh, yeah. Uh, what other, for example, regarding innovation or, or trying new things or transforming the organization even? Yes. Any other frameworks that you are using or having a look to? But I think it's the same rule that don't change your framework without testing it. <laughs> uh, do tests. Have, I think one, one problem in all change work is that we change without having a hypothesis uh, about what are we going to try to achieve. We directly have a solution that we like to test. For us, the key question is to define what we are trying to achieve and to when and how much, and then we do the change. Basically, focusing first on the problem rather than on the solution, is that correct? Correct. Right. I, I completely agree with that, especially with when we talk about digital and yeah. digital fascination and, and shiny objects, as it was put by another speaker. It is very tempting to jump into the solution because it looks cool, but it's actually forgetting about the real problem that maybe is, is easier and cheaper to solve than with other, other solutions. I think in the digital world, this is so common. <laughs> right. So common. You, are, you, get, um, you, you think it's a flourishing tool that you have and you like to have it directly and you don't test it at all and uh, ask yourself what are you trying to achieve by using it. Perfect. Uh, of course, I invite people to submit their questions. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to make a, another one. Uh, you know that this, this series, Goran, is, uh, it, it's around digital transformation that perhaps is a new concept or a, better said a new wording for an old concept. But uh, regarding digital uh, transformation in your region, um, what is the status? What is what is? Um, how do you see that? Is, is that is is? Do you think this is just buzz, uh, buzz wording, or you know, consultancy uh, uh, job or sale? Do you think that this is going to be something that is is here to stay? Absolutely, and it will accelerate. I think we are struggling right now. I would say. 90% of our population have a, a broadband at home. Right. I think our private life are so much more uh, advanced in how to use computerized and digital solutions than our working life. And we still have a journey to invest so people in healthcare have a handheld uh, computer that helps them with feedback and directions in their daily work. And we need to put in a lot of efforts, I think, to invest in all these simple digital <laughs> devices. So we can uh, benefit from, from the 
computerized uh, knowledge that we have today. Right. Uh, we have a, a, a comment. I don't, I'm not sure, Marie, if it's a question, I will read it. If, if there is a question, please also incorporate it there, Marie. Um, uh, she says that around 2004, I was told uh, by one of your leaders that a strong contribution factor to uh, Jokomi's successful work relating to quality and leadership development was a long-standing collaboration between political parties, ultimate decision makers, and a steady presence of top-level officials, uh, all of them with the right frame of mind. Perhaps you would like to elaborate on this comment from Marie uh, Goran? Well, I think it's true in our county still. I think that um, uh, we have a, a, a very solid respect between the political leadership and uh, bureaucracy that is done by professional administrative people. And uh, we have a clear line between what should the political system decide and what should the uh, professional system decide. And I how, think- How did you get there? <laughs> Please <laughs> tell us, <laughs> what's the secret? I want to buy. <laughs> you know, I haven't showed you, but um, we are a very value-based system. So everybody who uh, get employed needs to learn 13 basic values and the values are kind of success factors. So it's customization, everybody involved, process development, knowledge to everyone, quick reactions, decision based on facts and so on. So there are 13 of them. Then those 13 success factors are not allowed to be changed when we did get different political majorities. So the management is based on the values and not on the uh, results and finances. Right, and, and the key question for me, Goran, is, okay, that's very nice to be in that situation, but how that did all start it? What was the evolution? Uh, this is, is fantastic, but how did you manage to get into that? What happened? Um, we had 91 to 95, 1991 to 1995, a terrible financial situation. And we had to rewrite our budget like three, four times <laughs> every year because wow. we had no money and we started to look into different kind of ways to get rid of the budget <laughs> and instead manage our system by more long-term issues because we think healthcare should be a long-term question and not the short-term question. Then we found a quality self-evaluation system called Malcolm Ballrich. And within that uh, platform named Malcolm Ballrich, there is 13 values that are measured as success factors for a very well-functioning company. And well, me and uh, I mean the people that were around then, we got the political system to decide that these are the platform for our work. <laughs> and since then, it has been in our budget as the key page. And all bosses that are recruited on every level go through <laughs> lectures about these values. And what about politicians? They have to follow it because it's their book. They decide the budget. They decide the... But how do you force them? Imagine that there is an, a young guy that he doesn't know anything about Malcolm. What happens? I mean, how, how can he... How well, does... Course, do you manage to, for him to or her to buy in into the... Yes, case? we have to educate them. 
Right. And and the 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 problem or the the key maybe is that we have the strongest finances in Sweden. But what we have got that? it through this. What, so, what, what does it mean that that uh, what do you exactly mean that you have the strongest finance? Meaning what? Well, we have over one billion plus two years in a row on tax money. But and you mean that that you have a, a surplus? Yeah. You have more? You you have a, a more more money that you spend? Or what, what no. does it mean? It means that we spend less money than any other system for the same service. Okay. And uh, uh, Goran, do you mind? Do you mind uh, writing the surname or Malcolm in the in the chat? Yes. Uh, uh, let me see. Oh. Let me uh, find it like this. I can Google it to you and give yes, you. Yes, please, please add the Google link. That so, great. so this is. Um, you know, we believe that if we are um, uh, led and managed by knowledge and evidence-based medicine and guidelines and care programs and having everybody engaged in that approach, then uh, we reduce the risk uh, to um, reduce the risk to get uh, uh, mistakes and more costly um, situations. So actually, to, we work very hard to reduce the variation in everything. So we are very process oriented and measure our variation in all clinical processes. And if you reduce the amount of uh, R uh, random mistakes, you also get a more efficient process. Right. I mean, uh, the, the, I'm, I, I'm smiling because uh, what you say makes completely sense to me. The problem is how you implement that for so long. Yes. Which is what amazed me uh, because you can maybe have a, 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 a number of lunatics that for a while they agree but then there is an election or some changes and then the whole thing is solved. But from what you're saying, this is coming from the 90s. So it's like three decades, yes. this system. But we Job. think that healthcare is not, uh, healthcare is an industry. It's an right. industry. <laughs> right. But you need to uh, uh, understand that the results should be defined by the citizens and inhabitants. And we have one of our purpose is to do it as cheap as possible because no one wants to pay higher tax. Because this is for only for healthcare or this is for, for the whole Oh, region, it's also so for communication, uh, some education, culture and uh, um, yeah, theater and so on. So right. But, but the uh, majority of money goes to healthcare because it's so expensive. Right. So we, we are getting to the end of our time, uh, Goran. This has been really insightful. I don't know if you want to finish with any last remark or, I don't know, piece of advice or suggestion to our audience to close the talk today. No, I, I, I just would love to invite you to join this uh, thinking. And I think that uh, uh, in times where everything change and where everything is so unsecure, uh, healthcare, a democratic system needs stability. And therefore we need a framework that creates uh, stability. And we get it by changing it all the time. <laughs> That's good. So you get the stability by changing all the time. That's a yes. good one. Uh, I'm, I'm writing this down for me. Uh, Goran, this has been a, a great pleasure. Uh, I think this is the first time that we have a, a poetry in one of our talks. So you are very, very much welcome for, for doing so. 
and I don't see any more questions and uh, I like to be very straight on time. So thank you very much, Goran. Thank you very much, all the all of you attending. You know that I was mentioning at the beginning that uh, we are going to stop or uh, pause uh, the webinars uh, here uh, today uh, because we are embracing a new initiatives related to next generation Europe and so on at national level. So we don't have the capacity, but this has been very much um, uh, rewarding for us. So we will probably will take over uh, in some time, likely after the summer. Uh, you know that everything is in our website that uh, Maria will put the link on the chat in a minute. And you can see there the presentations, the, the talks, including um, including Corans. And if you're interested in, in and getting to know more when we start again, uh, please follow us in social media, on Twitter, LinkedIn, or you can register in our website. So, so please follow us. Uh, we hope to bring you more insights like the ones from Goran today. And again, Goran, thank you very much for your time and your insights. And um, good luck to all. Okay, we will be in touch. Thank you very much. Good luck, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.